Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my Stagey YouTube channel. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. And this is not my Stagey YouTube channel as you usually see it, because I'm coming to you from the Hare and Hounds Hotel in Newbury. I'm actually here to see a completely different show to the one that I'm going to be telling you about today, but I am travelling around the country seeing theatre because my life is mad like that. Apologies if the lighting and sound are not up to my usual YouTube quality. You should see the setup I have improvised in front of myself to try and make this video work. And I have about 25 more minutes to talk to you about this show. So if you don't know me already, I am a freelance theatre critic and content creator here in the UK. I talk about all things theatre in the UK, in the US. Big fan of new musicals, which is why I'm bringing you today's video. If you enjoy this one, make sure to subscribe to my channel. There will be lots more content coming very soon about all your favourite shows. And if you really enjoy it, feel free to give me a super thanks down below. That would be very much appreciated. I just tried to wink. I have no idea why. I don't know. I can't wink. I can either do it really fast with both eyes, bam, or really slowly with one, eh? Huh? See? Nailed it. So today I want to talk to you about The Great British Bake Off, The Musical. You heard me right! They have adapted The Great British Bake Off for the stage as a new musical. It has premiered recently at the Cheltenham Everyman Theatre, and when I say they have adapted, I mean Jake Brunger and Pippa Cleary, musical theatre writing team. And since this has been announced, there has been an enormous amount of, backlash is a very strong word, but people have been questioning the need for a Great British Bake Off musical. And even though we've had all sorts of things turned into musicals over the years, you know, film, books, television, other musicals, this, for a lot of people, seems to be the line in the sand that is just too much, where they've said a Bake Off musical, whatever next, that's the most outlandish concept. And yet, we have had an X Factor musical before, lest I remind you of I Can't Sing, the X Factor musical written by Harry Hill. Now, it was not successful, but this isn't exactly untrodden ground. And when you have something that has the level of adoration popularity that The Great British Bake Off does, not only here in the UK, but also overseas, it seems like a no-brainer to try and milk some of that popularity for the stage. I, I saw the milk in front of me, I couldn't resist. But was it successful? Let's find out. So before I even give my verdict on the show, I have to explain to you what it is. Because when this was first announced, I, as a veteran of the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and the parody musical, assumed that this would be a parody, that this would be a joke musical based on The Great British Bake Off, that it would spoof the entire concept, similar to how I Can't Sing spoofed the X Factor process, and I was not expecting much in the way of legitimate sincerity. Now, when I heard some of the first music that was released for this show, I started to get a bit concerned because it became apparent through the lyrics that they were taking it reasonably seriously, that this was just going to be a sincere take on The Great British Bake Off. And then I started to join the ranks of all the other people in my DMs telling me that it was a ridiculous concept and that it wouldn't work. I started to lose a little bit of faith in The Great British Bake Off musical as a concept. But a new musical premieres in the UK. I have to be one of the first people to go and see it. I booked a train all the way over to Cheltenham. I made a day of it. Obviously, I bought some baked goods beforehand because I can't watch an episode of Bake Off without eating something sweet. I knew it was going to be the same for the musical. But to answer all the questions about this show, it is quite sincere. It is structured not unlike an episode of Bake Off. Everything that happens in the modern version of A Great British Bake Off, not sort of the older series of the show, but certainly as it is now, where you have like the presenters doing little gags in between each segment, where you have the judges occasionally participating, the little judges chat moments about the technical, everything that would make up those parts of a Bake Off episode have been mined for content. Literally everything that you know about The Great British Bake Off, it will be joked about it, there will be a song about it, it will be talked about. You see technical challenges, you see signatures, you see showstoppers, you see the call home after winning Star Baker, you see the, the announcement of who is going home with unbearably long pauses and tension. Everything you know about Bake Off happens within the Bake Off musical. And I say that it's sincere. It is also very funny. It doesn't go to the extent of being a full parody, it is still quite heartfelt and just a legitimate musicalization of this thing, but it is still very funny. Like, there are spoofs of certain moments and the presenters get to be very comedic and get to have a lot of fun, and the existence of parodied versions of the judges 
is also funny. Now, they are not really cartoonish caricatures because they are parodying people who are very much still alive, and Pruleith came to see this show, but they will make fun of the fact that she loves any bake that has a lot of alcohol in it, and they will make fun of Paul Hollywood and the way that he takes himself very seriously. They have been reinterpreted as Phil Hollinghurst and Pam Lee. But as ever, the thing that endures the most about the Bake Off musical is the bakers, is these contestants, their stories, their humanity, and the way that the casting has been done here really reflects the level of diversity that you would see on a normal series of The Great British Bake Off. The diversity of age, of cultural background, of just character, is really what makes this musical win. So this may or may not surprise you, I fell in love completely with the Great British Bake Off musical. Hear me out, I know it sounds ridiculous. This is a beautiful show, it has such heart, it was just really well written, really well structured, and I can't disagree with something that is this ensemble cast of brilliantly layered and written and performed characters. It's all completely character driven. The music is wonderful and enchanting. The writing is spot on and golden. There are a couple of moments that they could tweak, but this is just a debut. This is a premiere production happening out of town. There is plenty of time for changes. For that reason, I am giving it a four star. There's some little bits that could be tweaked, but it was very close to a five star for me. I know that it has the capacity with this material, with this cast, to reach that five star of just musical theater perfection. I thought it was quite wonderful. And it sidestepped a lot of potential issues. The way that it takes you through a whole season of Bake Off with these characters, it had the capacity to get very repetitive very soon. You know, the first baker sings a song about themselves. I thought, oh, we're we going to just see that from every single person, like it's six. No, they varied it and they changed it up enough. I started to worry in the second act that we hadn't eliminated enough people fast enough. We still had a lot of bakers as we were approaching the final. They managed to deal with that. The pacing, I thought, was really pretty great throughout. I was never bored. I wanted more of it. It's a very Moorish musical. And that's the sign of something of real quality. When I'm enjoying it that much that I don't want it to end, I can't disagree with that. I can't say that that's anything less than brilliant. The score is really wonderful. It doesn't push the boundaries of what new musical theatre writing is. It's very classic, it's very contemporary British musical theatre, it very much has that sound, but I also don't think that every single new score that's written has to push the boundaries and has to sound revelatory and new and different to anything we've heard before. I think this stylistically is probably the best choice for a great British Bake Off musical. It's familiar. And it also, very cleverly, musicalises a lot of the themes and the score from the television show. It features the actual theme tune itself, but it also musicalizes a lot of the Great British Bake Off music that you might recognize. So that's a fun little challenge for you. If you have the opportunity to go and see this show in the future, try and pick out and recognize those Bake Off themes within the score. And the lyrics are exceedingly clever as well. They're incredibly sincere, but there's almost always a fun baking pun that they can play on. Half of them go in this incredibly filthy, humorous direction. The other half, are these like touchingly sincere moments that will occasionally like stab you in the heart with this double meaning. I will talk a little bit more about both of those things. So the humor of this show, I was gobsmacked occasionally with my delicate sensibilities as they are that this show had as much adult humor as it did, but then I'm reminded it's not unlike Bake Off the series. So it's not, I would say more risque than a TV episode of The Great British Bake Off, but I was, I was surprised by some of the jokes that they got away with in the stage version. I mean, there were kids in front of me and it just flies directly over their heads and smacks me in the face behind them, apparently. It's fun, it's incredibly tongue in cheek, and I'm not mad about it. On the other end of the scale, you have these songs that are so emotive, so passionate, and just delicately, softly touching in a way that legitimately made me cry twice. I cried twice, not out of happiness, but tears of just like gentle despair for some of these narratives, for some of these characters really beautifully portrayed. And these really important issues that I don't think have necessarily been portrayed on a stage before. You know, of the two really pulling at the heartstrings moments, one of them has definitely been talked about a lot on stage. The other is one that hasn't really been explored. I'm very much not wanting to give you any kind of spoilers because this is an incredibly new musical. 
It has only had a couple of weeks of performances out of town. I'm not going to be the person who comes onto the internet and tells you all about it, but I'm really glad they're covering some of the issues that they are. I need to bring up the cast list because I knew most of the names in this cast, but literally I want to tell you about every single person. As I sit here and talk about this, today is the last day of performances. This is Saturday the 6th of August and the show is finishing today. So Jay Jacobs and Scott Page play the presenters. They're hilarious, as you'd expect. They're very TV presenter ready. I could see either of them going on to present TV and they've both worked in TV before. Obviously they've both had the careers that they have had, but they're hilarious. They have this real believable chemistry, which it's not always easy to find a believable TV duo. A lot of the ones that we see on TV have been working together for years. And we know that Bake Off itself has worked very hard over the years to try and find pairings that really work and have that kind of lasting chemistry. Jay Jacobs and Scott Page have been brilliantly cast in this. Scott Page has some great moments where he gets to play up this kind of indulgent diva personality. Jay Jacobs has some lovely moments where she gets to show a real when the cameras are turned off humanity. I enjoyed those very fleeting moments of the script as well. The judges are played uncannily by John Owen Jones and Rosemary Ash, both icons of musical theatre, let me tell you. They are brilliant in these roles. They look exactly like Paul Hollywood and Prue Leith. It is scary at times. Prue's actually been to see this show. There is a side-by-side -side picture of her with Rosie Ash that is uncanny, but they are hilarious. Again, they have this great comedy double act going on the entire time. They actually have a kind of old school musical theatre duo song they do in the second act, which I enjoy. It is a little bit generic, and there's a moment in it where they have this kind of cute, dancey choreography moment. I would prefer, given the calibre of voices that they both have, if they had done more of an anything you could do, I could do better vocal competition moment. Because generally, and this is one of my only criticisms, the voices that you have in this cast are not unleashed nearly often enough. And I know it's not grandeur opera, but I would like to hear more soprano-ness from Claire Moore and Rosemary Ash, because the concept of the soprano is dying out in musical theatre. And when you have these two on stage together, again, from the original cast of The Phantom of the Opera, and you have long-standing Phantom John Owen Jones, you could let them utilise those voices. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Charlotte Wakefield gets what I would describe as the leading role of this production. She has a lovely arc. She has a lot of very nice songs. She gets to bring a tremendous amount of humanity to it. It's an incredibly endearing performance. You instantly root for this girl that she is playing. It's quite lovely, the arc that she gets to play throughout the show and more than a little bit heartwarming. I somehow have never seen Charlotte perform on stage before. She's done a ton of shows. I was so glad to finally get to see her in this. I have nothing but wonderful things to say. Incredible performance from her. Then you have the rest of the bakers. You have Damien Humbly, gives a lovely performance. You have Claire Moore, gets this excellent show-stopping number near the end of the show, and you can feel it bubbling through her character throughout the show as she's getting these little sassy moments and one-liners and this little bit of unexpected chemistry with another member of the cast that I will not tell you about. But she gets a great song towards the sort of 11 o'clock number slot at the end of the show. Again, I wish she could get more crazy operatic soprano-ness, but it's a lovely song nonetheless. Catriona Sanderson, one of my absolute favourites in this production. A beautiful number that she gets to sing. She's such a lovely presence within the context of the plot. I cannot fault anything she does on that stage. I don't believe I've ever seen her in anything before. I was instantly wowed by her and just oh, an incredibly emotive, heartfelt performance. I'm desperate to see her in about five more shows that I could cast her in instantly. I just fell in love with her. She was absolutely wonderful. Jay Segal, I want to shout him out as well. He was one of the first bakers to really show a huge amount of their personality within the show. And I think he did a lot for those opening moments because I will say, and this is a weird part of the video for me to talk about this in, but I'm gonna say it anyway. The show's opening is not quite as firecracker as you might want it to be. I think for new musicals, the opening number is such an important concept. It opens with a funny skit, but it may be over-egged just a little bit. And it takes us a little while to realize where we are. And the second number in the show is the one that I much prefer because it introduces the character of the Bakers and it's like, oh, this is the tone of the show. I think the opening number is so important for establishing this is what the show is going to be like. And when you open with something different to that and then announce it in the second one, I think that can be a little bit dicey. The rest of the Bakers are played by Michael Carhill, 
hilarious, wonderful, great character that he gets to play. Every single line he says seems to get a laugh. He is hilarious with everything. I enjoyed his performance very much. Symbia Kande, I have nothing but great things to say about her. She gets a delicious little arc because when everyone else is playing a certain type of character and you get to be different to those for specific reasons that I'm not going to go into because I'm not spoiling the plot, but I imagine it's a lot of fun to play. She relishes the opportunity and she's a very recognizable archetype of character. She has great fun with it. I enjoy it very much as an audience member. And Aaron Rayner as Hassan. I really wanted him to have a song. He has this lovely moment of the script and I like that it's not formulaic enough that he doesn't necessarily get a song. Not every moment has to be musicalized and it's a moment of real truth and sincerity. And he gets a nice little rap moment then in the second act, which is very Hamilton-esque. Not that every rap moment has to be Hamilton-esque, but this one in particular sounds very much of that style. But again, just another lovely story packed with genuine humanity. I keep saying it, but it's the word that keeps springing to mind because it's just so honest, so heartfelt, so incredibly real and touching and relatable. I have only great things to say about all of the performances. No weak links within this cast, which I don't even really like when people say that because it implies that there should normally be weak links within the cast. And like everyone's trained, everyone's talented. Why well, assume that there would be a weak link in the cast, but it's so true for this show. There is no one that is anything less than fantastic, in my opinion. I also need to shout out Ariella Elkins-Green, who is a young performer who plays a child character that I can't tell you anything about because it would give away too much of the plot. But she is very funny and very different to a lot of other child characters that you will see on stage. She's very sassy and outspoken in a really great way. I like all of the material that she has. She delivered it really capably, really wonderfully, had such a good sense of comedic timing and I really enjoyed her as well. I loved the design of this show. I loved the set design, the way that it just instantly evoked the Bake Off feel. I loved the lighting design from Ben Cracknell. I loved Rachel Kavanaugh's direction. I thought the pacing, like I said, was fantastic. The way that it sort of shifted around in tone throughout, the way that all of the staging was done, I can't complain about any of that. There were moments where they dropped in the front cloth of the tent and they had things staged in front and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Do I want them to do that? But then I was instantly won over and I thought, yes, no, that is the correct decision. And then they did some very interesting things with the set later in the second act. It really wowed me after seeing a certain amount of set and you know my expectations didn't go much further for them to then do the other things that they did. Even this I think is probably too much of a spoiler and I'm going to stop talking now but loved the set design. And that was from Alice Power who also designed the costumes which I did notice a few times and thought I really like those costumes. It's just Bake Off and they're wearing sort of ordinary people clothes but I enjoyed them. I noticed them more than a couple of times. So what is next for the future of this show? Well, I have heard rumors that they would be eyeing a transfer. And when you look at the marketing for this show, when you look at how much they've already done to promote it and the amount of money that has been spent on set and the cast that they have managed to get to Cheltenham to perform this little two week premiere, you can see quite easily that it is planning a further life beyond this point. I've definitely heard rumblings about the idea of a transfer and I would 100% be the first person in line for tickets to go and see it again when it does. I know everyone is very London centric with their ideas and the goal is always London transfer, London transfer. But I think for this show, because I'm already seeing people not being super receptive to the idea of it, it might almost be a better idea for it to first do a little bit of a regional tour. I could see this playing very well in places like Chichester, in places all along the South Coast, in Bristol, in the North, in the Midlands. I think take this out regionally, tour it around first, the same way that Blood Brothers initially toured prior to its West End run, build up that word of mouth, build up the sense of, oh, this is actually much better than we might have expected. I think people might be reluctant to go all the way to the West End if they are not local to London to go and see this show that they are skeptical about. But if you bring it to their doorstep, they will go and give it a chance and they will find out it's actually a lot more wonderful than anyone is giving it credit for. I think this show is going to surprise everyone. I'm ready for everyone to be pleasantly taken aback by the Great British Bake Off musical. And I'm honestly rooting completely for its success. You will hear me talking about this show an awful lot. I 
I encourage everyone to go and see this show, but the bottom line of it is that it brings you that same kind of wonderful feeling that the TV show brings. The reason we all fell in love with that, it's nothing to do with the baking. It's to do with the people and the personalities and their stories and the sense of togetherness and connectedness and all of them coming together and sharing the joy of baking. And I'm very much copying an idea from one of the songs in the show by even talking about that, but it's so, so true. And that's what made the TV show successful. And that is what I love about the musical. So anyone who is anyone can go and see this show. It is a great show for taking older relatives, for entire families, for children, for date nights. There are so many beautiful things that you can come together about on this show. It's just wonderful. I encourage you all to go and see it. Any lover of new musical theatre, go and see this show. So those are my thoughts on the Great British Bake Off musical. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you saw it for yourself, comment down below with your thoughts. And if you haven't seen it yet, but you're skeptical, let us know why, and we might be able to sort that out for you as well. Also, as a reminder, if you want to read all of my written reviews about all of the shows that I have covered, you can head over to showscore.com. There is a link in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Click on that, sign up for your own account and start reviewing all of the shows that you have seen so we can all read your thoughts. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my Stage YouTube channel for plenty more content coming very soon. If you really enjoyed this video, you can give me a super thanks down below. Very helpful to me as a Stage content creator. Or you can go to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where you can gain access to some exclusive photo and video content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>